When most of us picture the man known as Thor, it's likely the image we pull up is that of pretty boy Chris Hemsworth. His depiction is not far off the real deal, and if you look for old images of the Norse god online, you'll find most are of a handsome, muscular man with rather beautiful long hair. And yep, the old school Thor was also quite fond of a certain hammer. We have the movie version of this man, and we have the comic version too. But what about the real Thor? Did such a man really exist? We can trace Thor back to Germanic mythology, and the character was pretty much like the one we see today in the Marvel movies. Thor has always been the god of thunder, and he always carried the most fearsome weapon known to man. That hammer is called Mjolnir. As with most stories belonging to what we call mythology, there are many spins on the tales. The Norse people were spread out over Scandinavia and beyond, and so the tales tended to be varied. Thor himself is said to have had about 15 names. One thing that doesn't change is that he is the god of thunder and has tremendous strength. His father is Odin and his mother is Jora, although you might find she has different names too. But the question we all want to know is, was Thor real? Some of you might scoff at this question, but let's remember there are a lot of people in this world that believe in gods, and some of those people believe in miracles which to some extent are superpowers. Look around you, there are places of worship everywhere. We swear on the Bible in courts, we sing songs about heaven, we watch people being healed on cable TV when we can't sleep at 4 o'clock in the morning. And in the past, some of those Norse pagans also took their gods seriously. They did not just marvel at the heroics contained in the stories, they actually believed that Thor and his family were real. In the spirit of open-mindedness, we might say it sounds a little unfair if someone claims that their god is real but the other person's is just plain silly. And so today, we're taking our superhero seriously. During our research, we found a media story with this title, Swedish Archaeologists Find Thor's Hammer. The engineer who found it said, I at first thought it was piping sticking out of the ground. So wow, isn't that amazing? Well, not quite so, because the article was written on April 1st and there's no corroborating evidence. You can actually find quite a lot of articles that tell the reader Thor's hammer had been discovered, but these stories only seem to appear in the British tabloid media, and some of those newspapers could be said to have juggled with the truth on occasions. In the USA, Fox News reported in 2018 that the hammer had been discovered in Iceland, but what was found was really only a tiny amulet. There must have been lots of these around in the past. Thor's hammer was a special pagan symbol, and there were images of it everywhere in those days around Scandinavia and beyond. One of the UK's more creative media companies, called The Daily Mail, also said that the hammer had been found, but this time in 2014, and the site was in Denmark. The Mail writes, Archaeologists have unearthed a 10th century Thor's hammer in Kolbelu on the Danish island of Lowland that could finally end the debate on how Thor's legend influenced Viking jewelry. The paper does say, though, that thousands of such things resembling a little hammer amulet have been found all over the place. Imagine if in a thousand years someone digs up a Christian cross and says, hey dudes, this is the cross on which that guy Jesus died. It shrunk over time, of course. So with that in mind, we can say that finding a hammer symbol doesn't mean Thor existed, but it does show how many people believed in him. In fact, the Christian cross is often compared to Thor's hammer, in that the hammer was also a small symbol you'd find in many people's pockets and in their houses. That's because the powerful symbol represented not only thunder and storms and lightning, but also the protection of mankind, healing and fertility. Oh, and oak trees, we shouldn't forget them. Belief in such gods goes a long way back, and you can find ancient Roman manuscripts that talk about the gods of the Germanic peoples. Thor and his hammer have been compared to Hercules and his club. Of course, some people might have found this superstitious, but many others were happy to roll with powerful men who wielded magic weapons. In the 8th century, there's evidence that the Saxon people believed in Thor, with some guy in a hammer turning up in poetry. This is called a possible version of Thor, because there are many stories in many languages and dialects. The Christians, of course, were having none of it, telling those pagan fools that no such gods existed. Balderdash, they might have said. There's only one true god and it's ours. In the 11th century, if you told a Viking what he could do with his hammer, you might have gotten your eyes removed. In fact, there's evidence that in 1030 an English preacher told some Vikings his version of Thor, and for that they lynched him from a tree. Those Vikings, we believe, were not what you might call an inclusive horde. Yet in the end, nearly all converted to Christianity, so maybe one god was more real than the other in the end. 
While there are stories of such gods going back to ancient times, it seems we got many more stories in the 10th, 11th, and 12th centuries. This is called the Viking Age and post-Viking Age. Word spread, of course, because the Vikings liked to move around a lot. They successfully plundered parts of England back then, and at first burned down churches and laughed at the English people's pitiful god. A god with a skinny son that wasn't interested in martial arts and rather large house tools. Still, Christianity won many converts and that became the go-to religion for many people in Europe. Heathens were pretty much outlawed. Those hammer symbols were taken off the living room wall and replaced with crosses. The symbolic expression of power was replaced with a symbol of sacrifice. Who knows, it could have gone the other way. And instead of sitting in front of a giant cross holding up a bloody JC on Sunday, we could have been staring up at a muscular blonde guy wielding a massive hammer. Early Thor-based poems have been uncovered and then translated into English. Many of these poems involve a beast getting his behind kicked. This is part of one of those poems. Against the serpent goes Othan's son, and anger smites the warder of earth. Thor, of course, hands that serpent a good old-fashioned whooping. We could go on and on because there are lots of stories, or what we might call sagas, just as every religion had its stories. Did Thor beat up that serpent in real life, you might ask? Well, you could also ask if St. George slayed a dragon, if Moses parted the Red Sea, or if there was a forbidden tree in the Garden of Eden. And on that tree were some pretty irresistible looking apples. What we're trying to say, of course, is that Thor existed for some people, and he might still exist now for some people. All we have to go on are stories, because all history is a story. We cannot possibly tell you the immutable truth because we weren't there. We can only speculate or have faith. On that rationale, you could say Thor is as real as Jesus Christ, Allah, Shiva, Abraham, or that dragon which St. George put in its place. If this insults you, we only want to point out that some of those Norse people took their gods seriously just as you do now. The tales were just overtaken over a long period of time. The pagans and their rituals were replaced with churches and new books of high truths. These days, many devout people don't actually take everything in those books literally. Some do, but others will tell you that the tales serve merely as metaphors. Some of those pagans might not have believed in the man and god called Thor, but they had faith in what he represented. That was protection, and importantly, fertility, because everyone needed crops to grow to survive. Finally, there's no evidence that Thor existed. But as you've seen, there is a lot of evidence that shows us many, many people all over Europe believed he did exist.